Welcome everybody. My name is Chef Jacobson Valentine and you are here for Culture Cooking. Uh, for those of you who are on Zoom and it's your first time, I want to walk you through a couple steps before we get started. Of course, if you are hearing impaired or you need to do a little bit of subtitles to help you going through everything, uh, make sure you click on the bottom of your screen. It says CC for closed captioning. Get that going. If you have any questions throughout the entire, uh, entire class, make sure you just click on the chat type in your questions and we'll get taken care of, all right? Um, so again, my name is Chef Jacobson Valentine. I am the owner uh, and uh, executive director of Feed the Mass. Uh, we are a food revolution organization here in Portland, Oregon. And I've been in the restaurant industry for about 13 years and I've been teaching for the last five. Uh, it is my passion to inspire people to care about what they cook and what they eat. So culture cooking class, is a cooking show that gets down to the roots of where food comes from and teaches the community how to cook their favorite dishes from different cultures with ease and happiness. Because when it's easy and you enjoy it, you're more likely to do it. We purposely decided to launch the culture cooking uh, show during the Black History Month as a way to start the conversation about different cultures that come together in this country. Food is one of the most obvious ways we experience those influences every day. We intend to host these gatherings at least once a month through June, and we'll be adding more classes as the year progresses. If you want more information, go to our website, feedthemass.org slash classes. Links will also be located in the chat, so make sure you check out your chat. If you're not checking out your chat, we got problems. All right, uh, I wanna thank today's sponsor. I'm so happy to be here with them, uh, Oregon Food Bank. Thank you guys so much. Oregon Food Bank mission is to end hunger for good. That is something that I totally support and I'm all about. Our organization is all about ending hunger for good. And a big piece of their mission is to providing nutritious food to people who need it across Oregon and Southwest Washington. With direct support from Oregon Food Bank, 38 families tonight are tuning in and are cooking along with us. So thank you, Oregon Food Bank. We're excited to have Vicki Schwarberman. I said that right, did I say it right? Perfect. From Oregon Food Bank, joining us this evening. Vicki is a longtime champion for the community and is committed to efforts to support racial justice and equity. Vicki, why don't you take a moment and introduce yourself and share a little bit more about the Oregon Food Bank and the work you do. Thank you, Jacobson, and hello, everyone. I'm so excited to join you this evening to launch our first cooking class together. Uh, the work that Feed the Mass does brings together food and education to our community, and it's amazing, and Oregon Food Bank is proud to support. At OFB, we build community connections to help people access nutritious, affordable food, and we build community power to eliminate root causes of hunger for good. So I'm so excited uh, to have this event tonight. I'm so excited to be a part of it, to play a small part of it. Uh, Jacobson's gonna be doing the hard work with cooking. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to taste this delicious dish. So I hope you have fun and enjoy cooking with us. Well, I hope you're hungry, Vicki. All right, thank you, Vicki. So everyone knows Vicki will be monitoring our Zoom chat box. So make sure if you are on our chat box, I wanna test this out. Say hi to Vicky. Say hi, Vicky, on there. Just type it in as many times. Throw emoticons. Make her feel welcome. I'm pretty sure I make me feel better knowing that she feels better, and then we're all going to get through this together. All right. Well, so let's get on with our main dish tonight. We are celebrating Black History Month. I love this month. I get to wear the all black outfit today. So black, 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 and more black. I love it. Uh, today we are making jambalaya. It is a Creole dish uh, that is originated in Louisiana in the mid 1800s. Has a little bit of West African feel, a little bit of French, a little Spanish influence, and it consists mainly of meat and vegetable mixed with a little bit of rice. Today, we will be using andouille sausage, chicken, and shrimp. Originally, this dish was made from whatever we use. Um, so if you don't have exactly these ingredients the next time you make this, uh, you can substitute a little beef, a little pork, a little bit of uh, you know salmon, um, or just throw a bunch of vegetables into it and just totally make it vegetarian. Any, any way you go about this is no wrong way. Uh, for those of you who don't eat meat, like I said, just substitute what works for you. Don't stress about it. Everything will work out at the end. All right, so if you Google jambalaya, you will find there is many descriptions of this dish. 
you're a Creole, there is the Louisiana version, and today we're going to be doing more of the Creole Cajun version. So I uh, hope you guys are ready for this. Get all your spices out, you get everything knees and paws out. Um, but before we get started, safety is my number one concern. I never want anybody to hurt themselves while cooking because when you get hurt, you get discouraged. Um, so whatever I'm going to be showing you guys, take your time. Take a breath right now, big deep breath, and breathe it out, and just go with it. We're gonna have fun. Take your time. So, the first thing we're gonna talk about, knife safety. Um, as you see right here, we have our cutting board, we have our knives, super important. Always have a sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, there are tons of places uh, throughout Portland that sharpens your knife. A really good place um, is Sur La Table. They do it for like five bucks. Get your knife sharpened uh, every three months. Three to six months is usually a really good time, depending on how much you cook. So if you're gonna be taking these classes, you'll probably have to sharpen your knife every three months. I'm sorry, but you gotta do it. Um, of course, let's talk about a little bit more about the knife itself and all the different parts of it. Uh, in our knife, we have the blade itself, we have the handle, we have the cutting edge, and we have the spine. Super important. Be careful of the cutting edge because, of course, sharp things cut things. Um, over here, we have the um, bolster. The bolster is the point where the knife and the blade come together. And whenever we hold a knife, we kind of go and pinch it by the bolster. So we take our two fingers, whatever your dominant hand is, and we're going to pinch right above the bolster. And with the rest of your fingers, let your knife kind of just relax in there. See, nice and easy. Now, if you wave it, it shouldn't be too floppy in the front. It shouldn't be too floppy in the back. It should be nice and balanced. That's what we're looking for, nice and comfortable. With this hand, this is gonna be your guide hand. So anything that happens with this hand, this is gonna be kind of like your engine. This is gonna be your gas. So whatever you do, the more you move it, the more faster you can cut. So we're gonna go slow. So anytime we do anything, we're gonna go slow. So the first thing we're gonna teach you guys how to do is a pepper. Now. The ingredients that we're going to be using today are super important and they're super fresh. So uh, let's go over them real quick. So we have our bell peppers. So we have green and red. We're going to be chopping up the red. We have our onion, a white onion, super easy. You don't have to go too crazy. If you go with a red onion, just know you might discolor it a little bit. It might turn a little purple, but it's all good. We have celery. If you don't know, this is what celery looks like. A lot of people don't like it because it doesn't have much flavor, but when you cook it, it tastes amazing. Um, other ingredients that we're going to be using are going to be parsley. We got some garlic in here. Um, so let's chop these up and then we'll go over the rest of the ingredients as we start cooking. So bell peppers. It is one of those things where if you want to create hassle, do cut it the wrong way. The main thing is inside of every bell pepper is a bunch of seeds. I want to make sure that we avoid the seeds whenever we're cutting these. So what we're gonna do is use a little imagination. We know inside of our bell pepper, there's a seed pod right there. And we know that the, the actual flesh itself is about a half inch thick. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay it on the side with our, with our controlling hand. We're going to tuck our fingers in and then you can actually kind of see, we're gonna do a, like a little bit of a claw action, a little bit of tucking our fingers in. So we're gonna claw it, we're gonna push down gently. We're not trying to crush it. Gently, we're gonna get our knife. We're gonna lean it right against our, our knuckle. That little knuckle that's protruding, lean it, the blade right next to it. You do not have to be afraid of your fingertips getting cut off because that blade and that knuckle is protecting your fingertips. Most sensitive part of your fingers. So you don't wanna cut those off. All right, so make our claw. Now, we're again, we're going to measure. So when you're measuring, you never measure on this side of the blade. You always measure on this side of the blade. Now, this is also a really good safety tip. If you're looking on this side and your finger happens to be on this side, don't go down. So you always make sure you check before you slice. If your fingers are on this side, you tuck it back in and then you slice. So we're gonna go from tip to butt. So we measure, make sure it's the right height, tip to butt. And you just pull back, nice and easy. Now, cool part is you can actually see the flesh and you can see the seeds. We're gonna try to avoid that because we don't wanna make a mess of all the seeds. So we're gonna go around, boom, turn it, boom, turn it, boom. 
Keep going. All the way around. Now you're gonna do this for both the green and, yellow, uh, green and uh, red bell peppers. So we're gonna take the bottom off, because this is still good. Now, a lot of people will go at this point and throw it away, but there's still a lot of good flesh right here. So we're gonna turn it on the side, and we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut. We're gonna cut. And we're gonna make sure we do not waste any part of that bell pepper. So at this point, now we can compost. Now, if you are a gardener, like I am, we're gonna save these seeds. You're gonna put them into a little Ziploc bag. And then later when we dry it out, we can actually use them again to grow some bell peppers. So save this for spring. All right. So next part of this, we're gonna turn these little planks into sticks. So from here, we're going to measure about a half inch and cut. Measure half inch, cut. Half inch, cut. Nice and easy. Go one more time. Half inch, cut. Half inch, cut. All the way through. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can actually do this without even looking. I suggest don't do that. All right? It can be very dangerous. All right. So we have all of our sticks. Get the bottom cut up. Beautiful. One more time. Beautiful. And all these little ones we can chop up on the end. All right, so we have our sticks in a giant pile. Now we're gonna turn them. Now, you can do this giant stick like pile, or you can split it up if you have smaller hands. I have big hands, so I'm gonna do it all at once, but make it fit your hands. So we're gonna do the same size, half inch and cut. Take your time, breathe, don't freak out, measure, be consistent. If you're not consistent, they're not gonna cook at the same rate, and then you're gonna have some raw ones and some cooked ones or overcooked ones. We don't want that. Take our peppers. Now these little top ends, again, take our time, chop them up, relax, breathe. If it's if you're finding it really hard to like kind of like relax, throw some music on. I suggest a little Marvin Gaye, a little bit of uh, maybe Billie Eilish, a little bit of Chris Stapleton. You know, there's genres. Go for it. All right. So peppers, you want to get some containers. You can also put this all into a tray if you want to, but get some uh, get some containers because we're gonna keep all of our vegetables kind of organized, ready to go ready to cook at any moment. All right, so we have our peppers done. Next thing we're gonna do, our celery. This is again, another fun one. So I'm gonna teach you guys the choo-choo train method. The choo-choo train method is one of my favorites because I like choo-choo trains and we get to act like one for a little bit. So first thing we're gonna do, get our knife. We're gonna take our vegetable. You're gonna point it. So think about your cutting board as a compass. So this is your north, this is your south, this is your west, this is your east. east. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna point our celery towards the northeast of our cutting board. From there, we're gonna do our claw, point our knuckle out, tip of our knife down to the cutting board, and we're gonna go it from tip to butt in a choo-choo train fashion, back and forth. Nice and easy, taking our time, and chugging along. Chugga, 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 chugga. This is something you can definitely do with your kiddos. There are some really awesome little knives for little chefs. I suggest them. Get them using a knife as early as you can so they're not afraid of knives. We don't want kids afraid of knives. It is a tool. We need kids to know that these things are tools and not swords, not daggers. They are tools. We got to respect them. As soon as they start respecting knives, the better it is going to be later on in life. All right, so celery, nice and chopped. You have two of them, make sure you chop those up nice and even, because again, even cuts equals even cooking. All right, 
So Vicki, how's everybody doing? Any questions so far? Everybody is doing great. Um, I'm looking in the chat. I did see a question earlier. Someone said file um, powder or okra. Who likes which one the best? Oh, um, I'm not sure if you have an opinion on that, Jacobson. Yeah, so I love okra, but some people hate the sliminess of it. Um, one of the things I would always suggest is before you cook it, rinse it, and then you get some of that sliminess off. Um, but if you don't like okra, using the filet, pro uh, filet powder actually helps with the thickening process of the cooking. So we want that you got to do one or the other. So if you don't like um, okra, use a little filet powder. It works amazing, and it's a really good flavor. So thank you for that question. All right, next we are going to do our parsley. So easy way to do parsley, and I'm pretty sure there's gonna be tons of chefs who hate me for this, but I like to grab all the leaves um, from the top, grab it, and then twist. All right, it's that simple, honestly. Now, if you want it to be not as fluffy, you want it to be a little more fine, I'm gonna show you a really easy trick to do that. So, we're gonna take our pile. Remember that choo-choo train method? So we're gonna take our little pile. We're gonna ball it up. All right, ball it up as small as you can. Now again, I have huge hands, so this is easy for me. If you need smaller piles, do smaller piles. It's okay. And then all we're gonna do, again, knife it against our, our finger, our knuckle, and just give it a gentle chop all the way through the pile. Now. If you notice that it starts to fall apart, crumple it back up, give it one more shot. All the way through. Beautiful. Now, what we're gonna do, taking with our hand, nice and flat, all right? Tip of the knife down, we're gonna go across, and we're gonna chop through. Making sure our fingers are staying nice and flat. All right, so now we have a little bit more of the confetti-like parsley. So this is gonna be our external and internal garnish. Now these little stems that we have, if you wanna pick through and get more of the leaves, feel free to do so. I like to actually just take these, put them in stocks, or um, you can also you know, flavor waters with it. Um, you can also use it as compost. So either way, just don't waste it. Don't just throw it in the trash. Keep things away from the trash, super important. All right, so. I'm gonna go give my knife a quick rinse. Beautiful. And Jacobson, we already have a question. Do you recommend ceramic knives as well? Um, so the thing is, I, I've used ceramic knives and I feel that like they're a little bit on the fragile side because if you accidentally drop a ceramic knife, they shatter. Um, I dropped the knife and maybe I might have like dent the tip a little bit, but they don't shatter. So I would definitely say, the most important thing is get a knife that A, you have a lot more control over. Um, if it's a ceramic or a metal knife or a you know, stainless steel knife, it doesn't really make a difference as long as you feel comfortable using it. If you've got one of those giant knives and you're like, I feel like I'm holding Excalibur, uh, take it down a notch. Go to a knife shop, grab a couple knives, see what feels good in your hands, Chop a few things because they usually have vegetables in there for you to chop things and see what fits your hands. Don't buy stuff because it's the new craze or anything like that. Find something that works for you, works for your budget, and you feel comfortable using. So that would be my, 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 my answer, I guess, for that. All right. So now we're going to get into stinky territory. We have the garlic. Garlic is, I, I would say, the best flavor but it's also one of those things that I highly suggest the way you peel it is super important. You don't want to use your knife. And I think a lot of people have this tendency to go with their knives, put it down the garlic and smash into it. Two things. A, if you have a nice knife, you're bending your knife. You don't want to do that. I pay about $200 for this knife. And if I accidentally bent it and it can't cut straight, I got to throw it away or, or recycle it. Not really cool. Um, and on top of that, if you put your knife down and you accidentally turn your blade up, you can slice your hand open. Nobody wants that. That's not cool. So I take my knife, keep it far away from my garlic, at least for now. Take our garlic, we're gonna lift up our cutting board, put our garlic down, and all we're gonna do is a slight pop. We don't need to smash it into a pulp, a slight pop. There we go. 
just enough to crack the husk. It should peel nice and easy. It's still a whole garlic. It's not, it's not a little mashed or anything like that, but this is perfect. This is what we need. Now, we need to mince it. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go lengthwise. A lot of people like to chop uh, going by, uh, at the width or the uh, width wise. And I think it's really hard to actually get really good mince that way. So we're gonna go lengthwise. So from there, nice and easy, taking our time. Go as small as you can. If you realize it's super chunky, it's okay. We're gonna have a little trick to that. So we have our lengthwise chops. Now we're gonna go one more time, lengthwise, to make them into, again, sticks. It's a common thing when it comes to dicing things. Got our little sticks. And now we're gonna go into the dice. Now, if you want it to go a little bit smaller, it's the same method that we did for the parsley. So we're gonna take our tip of our knife, make sure we get everything down. Tip of our knife, down, hand on top, and we're gonna go a little bit smaller. Nice and easy. All right, garlic down, garlic off. And then we're gonna take our cutting board, bring it to the edge, and slide it in. All right, so you're probably noticing right now your fingers are smelling like garlic. A really cool little trick you can do, rub a little bit of mustard on your hands, then rinse it, then wash it with some soap. You notice that garlic smell is instantly taken away. So if that's anything you can take away from this entire class, you don't have to worry about the smell of garlic in your hands anymore. There you go, that was free for you. All right, next, onion. Now, everybody says they cry. Why do they cry? Uh, majority of the time is because you have a dull knife. Um, so there's tons of little trip, tips and tricks that people like to do, the match in the mouth, the chewing on bread, chewing on gub, um, wearing goggles. But the easiest way to prevent yourself from crying is having a sharp knife. You gotta think of an onion as a bunch of little bal little balloons in, the, uh, in each layer. And in those little balloons is, um, uh, is, is is a is an acid in there that makes you cry. So when you go in with a knife that's dull, instead of cutting through the balloons, you are actually exploding these balloons and then it gets aerated and then it gets into your eyes and you start crying. And then when you're crying, people are like, why are you crying? And you're gonna be like, I'm emotional and it's been COVID. So yeah, <laughs> just kidding. But for real, having a sharp knife actually makes it a lot easier to be able to chop uh, an onion. And on top of that, it will prevent you from crying. Trust me, when I did this for everybody the first time, everybody was like, why don't you cry? This is why, sharp knife. All right, while I'm doing this onion, I want you guys to be ready for the first question. And the first question, of course, I need you guys answering. I need you guys to flood the chat box. How was, or how has your cooking changed during the pandemic? All right, get that answers in there while I show you guys how to chop this onion. All right, so in here, we have our onion. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut lengthwise. So whatever side is the longest, we're gonna cut lengthwise all the way through. So tip to butt, length all the way through. 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 Beautiful. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it. We're gonna cut it the widthwise. And then what all we're gonna do is go all the way through. Tip to butt, all the way through, taking our time. Remember, cut them evenly. You don't want small, then big, small, then big. Once you get about three fourths, what I'm gonna do? Tip it over, super easy. Boom, onions, done. Not even crying a tear, no tear. Nothing but tears of joy, I don't have to cry. All right, so take our onions, Bring it to the edge. All right, super important. The last thing you wanna do is touch your eyes right now. So keep your hands from your face as much as possible. You shouldn't be touching your face anyway because that's disgusting. You're cooking for your family. No one wants their face gunk in their food. So don't touch your face. All right, so Vicky, are you there? I am. Are you crying yet? 
I yes, I've started crying. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. So Vicky, what are some answers that people were uh, giving about like how has your cooking changed during the pandemic? Well, uh, full disclosure, I posted a completely different question first. Oh. So, you know, we still have great question, great answers coming in. Um, we're cooking more at home. We love, love it. it. Love it. Um, make a lot more meals at home. Yes. Um, thank you. Hello, fresh. Um, let's see. Cooking more as I get older. Don't like eating out anymore. So I think we have a trend going on. I love it. I love um, it. Cooking. Yep. Jackie says, I now order food online for myself and my two girls, but sometimes I go to Fred Meyers for fresh produce items. Um, but I always was taught to cook enough for two to three days. I like yeah, that. Love it. A little meal planning. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with that. And what uh, Kathleen said, I'm home in the evenings now instead of at rehearsal. So I'm able to cook dinner instead of eating a sandwich in the car. Mm, I love it. Mm. I love all these things. Well, guys, I hope I can encourage you to do more of this. Now, we're going to go through the process of doing the proteins. Let's grab these. So our proteins, again, we have some shrimp. We have some chicken thighs, and almost dropped it, and dewy sausage, all right? So let's go through these. The first one, of course, is going to be the one that's already almost cooked. So most important thing is that you do not want to cross-contaminate if you don't have to. So we're gonna do the cooked stuff first. So things that are fresh, we got our vegetables done, beautiful. Things that are already cooked, our sausage. Let's do this next. So. We have our sausage. All we're gonna do, these little pieces of onion. Sorry, I'm like OCD right now. All right, we have our sausage. We're gonna cut them into about a quarter inch, nice and thin, beautiful. Be consistent, take your time. And you should have about two to three of these sausages or about close to eight ounces or half a pound. Beautiful. Take her time. All right, so get those all in there. Beautiful. All right, sausages ready to go. Love it. All right, next, we're gonna go from uh, raw to seafood. So we're gonna go with the chicken. Now chicken, we have bone in, skin on, chicken thigh. I like chicken thigh because if it's your first time cooking meat, um, chicken thigh, you can cook it to like 200 degrees and it'll still be delicious. So this is kind of the, you can't mess it up kind of uh, protein. So I'm gonna go with these. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take off the skin. Now don't throw away the skin, we're taking it off. Mainly because we want the fat. The fat that's in the skin is gonna flavor our meal and we want that. So we're gonna take the skin off. Uh, just peel it off. I know this is disgusting for the vegetarians. I apologize, but this is how you do it. I'm gonna do it for both. Uh, here we go, one more time. Taking off the skin, just peel it off, nice and easy. All right, next, we gotta debone this bad boy. So, we're gonna turn it into the inside of the thigh, so the skin side, we're gonna flip it, skin side onto the cutting board, and we're gonna cut, take this bone out. This is the femur of the chicken. Take our knife, now, this is, again, super careful. Taking the tip of the knife, we're going to take and follow the actual bone from the knee all the way up to the hip. And all we're going to do is follow the bone with the tip of the knife. Now, it's going to reveal the femur. From there, we're going to go with our fingers and pinch around the bone. I know this is a little grody guys. I'm sorry, but you need to learn how to do this. This is going to save you tons of money. Average cost for skinless chicken thighs and boneless is $2.99. These with the bone in was $1.99. You save a dollar per pound just by doing this process. And it took you what? 30 seconds. Let's save some money. All right. So bone. Keep it to the side. We're gonna use that for stock maybe sometime. You never know. All right, we're gonna do it one more time. So we got our femur. 
This one actually has a broken femur. That's not cool. So we're going to try to find it. Taking our knife, trying to find that little femur. There it is. Open her up, reach around, or him up. He, he or her. We're not going to be gender inclusive. I mean, we're going to be gender inclusive in this one. All right. There we go. Perfect. Thigh, bone out. If there's any little bit of cartilage, it'll be fine. But yeah, perfect. All right. Now it's time to butcher these up into edible pieces. So we're going to lengthwise. So the long side, we're going to cut this right in half. There we go. Nice and easy. Cut in half. We're going to do one more time with the other one. So we have our two chicken thighs. Boom. Bada bing. Now we're going to go cut this into, I would say, one inch pieces. There we go. So for these chicken thighs, about thirds. For this one's a little thick one. So maybe, yeah, we'll do thirds. I like big pieces of chicken, it's all right. All right, so with this, we're gonna grab, oh, I'm missing a container, give me a sec. Oh, we'll use you, perfect. We're gonna get our chicken into container. Now, if you can do this ahead of time, do all your chicken prep, have it in Ziploc bags, throw it in the freezer. It's gonna save you a lot of time when you're trying to do some meal planning. So just think about that when you're doing your cooking. So we're gonna take our two chickens, chicken skin and their chicken meat. We're gonna put them there. We're gonna put all this into the sink because we don't need a cutting board or knife right now. And super important, we're also gonna wipe this down because we don't want accidentally to cross contaminate the chicken with any other you know, protein or anything like that. So here we go. So before I go, I want to ask one more question. What is your favorite dish growing up? So uh, Vicki, you're putting that question in, correct? Yep. All right, we're having that and I want some answers. All right, guys. So before we start answering some questions, we got to start peeling some shrimp. So we have some deveined, but show on shrimp. They're about $6.99 at Fred Myers for like, I think it was like three pounds. So this is an amazing deal. It was only $6.99. So hope you got the extra large ones. If you didn't, next time you go, it's a really good deal for shrimp. So when we're doing this, we're gonna take our little shrimpies. We're gonna go from the back and you're gonna see there's like a little slit. We're gonna take the shells and we're gonna peel and we're gonna peel all the way around. And then a really cool trick to get all the meat out. We go with the, the tip of the end of the shrimp and all we're gonna do is pinch until it pops out. And we got all the meat out of the, out of the peels and we have our shrimp. So we're gonna do the entire thing while that's happening. Vicky, yeah. what, what are people saying? We've got some tasty responses. I, all Honey, right. chicken wings, clam chowder, butter chicken, oxtail and black eyed peas, spaghetti, oh. Oh. cheese fondue, fondue, gumbo, green chili. Oh, my mom's homemade egg noodles, oh. French dip, mac and cheese. We're going to ask you to send some of those dishes directly to me. And that would Please. be perfect. Yep. Um, enchiladas, tortillas. Um, yeah. Gosh, awesome. So this keeps going. Jeez, keep going. I, I got a lot of shrimp to go with. <laughs> uh, fried chicken and mashed taters and gravy. Yum. Meat pie. Love it. Yes. Um, so I have a quick, quick thing for you guys. Also, um, if you are new to our cooking classes and you haven't already followed us on Instagram, make sure you check us out at, at feed the mass. And I want to see some of your guys' pictures. So make sure you guys are tagging me in your pictures, create some memories, put some videos, some, some stories, share what you're doing. Um, if you could also do a really cool one where you're having the computer and yourself and you're doing a selfie with me talking to you. I know it's a little bit kind of crazy, but I want to see you actually doing the class. Don't say you were there and you didn't be there. So I want to, I want proof. All right. Perfect. So Vicky, I, I, I want, I want people to get to know you a little bit. So I, I we're going to go a little bit off the books. Is this okay with you, Vicky? All right. All right. So Vicky, tell me what was like the, the food that you grew up eating? I grew up eating Jamaican food. 
My really? mom is Jamaican, and the favorite, my favorite dish that she made was ackee and saltfish um, with dumplings. And it's a million and one calories, but it's <laughs> worth it. Um, I loved it, and it made me just so happy. I mean, if, even if it tasted gross, it would make me happy because our whole family was around the table. Um, we did it together. I felt connected to my culture, my background, and uh, she would teach me some patois while she helped me Ooh. cook. What's, what's patois? You got, you, got, you got a new word for me. Uh, I like it. <laughs> it's like broken English, <laughs> and it's, it's technically broken English, but to me, it sounds like a completely different language. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I don't, I, you're putting me on the spot. I'm not going to say any words, <laughs> but, um, it connected me with her background and I've never been to Jamaica. So that's the closest oh. I've been to, to my culture through my mom. Okay. Yeah. No, I love it. Uh, broken English is pretty much half of the Hawaiian language. So I get it. Uh, we, we call it, uh, speaking pigeon. So, uh, yeah, I'm all about, um, trying to, uh, I guess cipher different people's uh, English. So when I go to different places throughout the United States, everybody say things super different. I usually try to pick up those accents because you never know. It's kind of like one of those things that like, I, I feel a little bit kind of in tuned with this culture by, you know, experience it and living it, you know? All right, so shrimp is finished. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna clean our station. So uh, if you are already caught up, um, then we're going to take this time. We're going to take about two minutes. Let's start cleaning up. Um, while this is happening, um, I want to, I want you guys to take some time, go to Instagram and follow us. So by the time we get done with this two minutes, I should have at least 150 new followers. I hope if not, I'm a little heartbroken, but I'll be all right. So take two minutes, clean up your area and we're going to start cooking. Dutch oven. We have our Dutch oven. We have our spoon. We have our heating elements, so you guys have a gas, you have an electric stove, um, or if you have an induction burner, like we do, we fancy. Um, so we're going to use our induction burner to get this heated up. We're going to go to medium amount of heat, so if you're in a range that has like 1 to 10, we're going to hit it about a 7, 7.5 if you can get that, get that precise. Or looking at about 430 degrees on your stove if you're using an induction burner. So we're gonna let this heat up. It's gonna take about a minute or so. Um, now, while this is happening and we're starting to get this heated up, uh, we have another question for you guys. What is the funniest mistake you've ever made while cooking? Think about it. You're probably laughing already. Don't point fingers, but we know who that person is. For me, it's, 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 it's most likely me. When I was a kid, I burned everything. It's just how it was. I was a little pyromaniac, just kidding. All right, so we're gonna make sure our pan is nice and hot. And Dutch ovens, they hold a lot of heat. So we wanna make sure that it gets enough time for it to actually generate some heat. So when we're cooking things, when we put something cold in it, it doesn't just turn the heat all the way off. We wanna make sure this is nice and hot. So be patient, let it get hot. All right, so while this is happening, um, again, I'm so glad you guys are here. Like, I, I'm pretty sure you guys know for with COVID, Feed the Mass, for those of you who have done to our cooking classes, Feed the Mass hasn't been doing cooking classes for about a year. Actually, next week will be exactly one year um, since we were able to do our last cooking class. And I've missed you guys. Honestly, I've missed teaching. I actually was super nervous about teaching again because I was like, well, what if I still don't get it? But you know what? I still got it. Look at this. Still got it. All right. Pan, getting nice and hot. The first thing we're going to do is we got to sear off our chicken. Super important. We want to get our chicken kind of almost to about three fourths cooked before we actually put it into our jambalaya. So we're going to use a little bit of chicken fat. Again, in the Jewish world, it is called schmaltz. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little bit of schmaltz. All right. So we're going to take our chicken skin, lay it down. Ooh, look at that. You hear that sizzle. I'm going to get them close. Can you hear that? Look at that sizzle. Mm. Get that sizzle going. And, um, no. All right. So we're going to render the chicken schmaltz or chicken fat out of that chicken. And be patient. Let it, let it render. 
Let all that, that, that fat come out. Oh yeah. Now we're cooking with chicken fat. Be patient, move it around. Oh, that's what he was talking about. I knew I forgot. I was I was like, what is this thicker? Thanks, Steve. You're awesome. All right. All right. So next thing we're gonna do, take a little bit of olive oil. Get this in there. That's gonna help kind of render a little bit of that fat out. And we're going to be adding in our chicken. Yes, leave that skin in there. We're going to keep it cooking. All right, so super important when we're talking about searing things. When we're talking about searing things, we're going to make sure that we leave it alone. Let it cook. Let it do its thing. So, now this is happening, let's talk a little bit about spices, because we gotta get a little bit of spiciness happening. So, in here, this little plate right here, we have our oregano, we have some thyme, we have salt, red chili flakes, and we also have black pepper. Now, we're gonna make our little spice blend right here with our fingers. Blah, blah, blah. Get your fingers in there, don't be shy. Make sure your fingers are clean though, no, no bigger fingers in here. Super important. Rub it around, mix it up, beautiful. Now another spice we're gonna be using is Cajun seasoning. So you can find this in your spice aisle, Cajun seasoning, pretty bomb. Love this stuff, put it on everything, including eggs. Um, so we're gonna take a little bit, about, I would say about a teaspoon, we're gonna mix it into our spice blend. I like to keep a bunch on the side because I like to spice it the way I want. This brings a little bit of heat, brings a little bit of, of different flavors, and I want this to taste the way I want it to taste. So, if you notice that your pan starts to kind of get a little smoky, turn your heat down, it's probably too hot. Not a big deal. All right, so chicken's cooking. It's been about a minute. Look at that. Got a good color on these. I'm not sauteing it, I'm just giving it a good sear. That beautiful, good color. That smoltz is, is happening. It's smelling amazing already. The funny part about this right now is majority of people in here are all vegetarians or vegans. So I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, oh, I love it. All right, we're gonna give them all a quick flip. Now understand this guys, if you're not with me, don't stress. Go at your own pace. If you're still prepping things, it's okay. Take a little bit of notes. We'll, you'll catch up when you catch up. We got time. This is your time to just enjoy things. Do it at your own pace. So if you're a little behind, not the end of the world. All right, so after we get done flipping it over, we're gonna take a big pinch and we're gonna season our chicken. Beautiful. All right. Now we're gonna give it one more toss. Beautiful. All right. Start activating some of these spices. Oh, this looks good. And then we're going to take out the chicken. Leave the chicken fat or the chicken skin in there. We're still rendering that chicken skin. I use a slotted spoon because I want to keep all the fat in there. And I know what you're saying, but Jake, there was raw chicken. Don't worry. We're gonna finish cooking this, so don't stress too much. Raw chicken's okay right now. We're gonna be cooking more of this again, so don't stress. This is a very common practice, I promise. All right, so from here, we're going to do our trinity. Now, every culture has their vegetable blend uh, that starts on a lot of their cooking. For us, we're gonna be using the trinity. The trinity yeah. is peppers, celery, an onion. So we're gonna start off with uh, these, all of these at the same time. We don't have to really stress too crazy about this. But if you were to actually substitute the peppers and add carrots, it would be a mirepoix. Now, if you were to take out the, the celery and add tomatoes, 
then we have a sofrito, which is Spanish. So, like I said, we're gonna get back into the these different cultures that are influencing us. And like I said, a little bit of French, a little bit of Spanish, and a little bit of Spanish. So, our Trinity goes in. Onions, beautiful. Onions, beautiful. Halfway through. Give it a little seasoning, a little bam. There we go. Got a little bit of our peppers. A little bit of the green ones. And again, one more seasoning. Boom. Love it. All right. So we're going to give it a toss. Beautiful. And we're going to let this cook down. All right. While this is cooking down a little bit, we're going to make some people a little bit embarrassed. It's okay. We're having fun. We all fail. And I'll start us off. Funniest mistake I've ever made was actually trying to help people. So we had a cooking class that was uh, being volunteer uh, helped with, and I wanted to make something special for them. It was pizza. Super simple. We had a pizza oven. I was like, I want to make y'all pizza. I, I feel very charitable to you guys. So we made, I made a pizza, threw it in the oven. Then something happens, we got really like busy and we were going in and like we just started a class. We totally forgot about it. About 10 minutes into the class, we started seeing black smoke come out of the oven. And of course, your own chef here burnt the pizza for everybody. So it was embarrassing, it was a fail, but you know what? I'll, after that, I always set timers. So with that, Nikki, Tell me some fails, some funny things, mistakes. Oh my goodness. We all love these things. I want to hear some. I can't stop smiling. Can't <laughs> Again, stop there's smiling. no judgments. It's all love. Using Morton salt instead of good salt. Oh. Shelby said, uh, not funny, but I mix baking soda and baking powder up all the time. Okay. Um, Dakon says, made pancakes with flour and served to guests before realizing it wasn't pancake mix. Um, <laughs> and... There's one that said, once I accidentally used cement instead cement. of flour, <laughs> cement, to make onion rings. Why was there cement in the kitchen cup, cupboard? I don't know. I don't know. But it happens. Wait, time out, time out. You know, can, can, I need to know this question. Sorry. Could you find that person and can we talk to them real quick? Rebecca? Rebecca, call, can, you, Rebecca can you put your hand up so we can find you? I need to know more of this story. Um, <laughs> Can, actually can, we, can we get a little bit of uh, a little audio? I want, I, I need, I'm sorry. Mic is open. I, can I want to know her. this story so bad. And we got a little bit of time. So let, like, I think this is going to be a good start for everybody. <laughs> I, um, it wasn't actually me. It was my mom. Um, she's oh. right here with me cooking today. So I'll let her share the story. <laughs> I right, really Rebecca, are you there? Can you hear me? Hi. Um, in Mexico, we had lent, we had let some of my, her dad's, um, relatives stay in the house, and for some reason, they left cement in the kitchen. Uh huh. Do I consider them 100% responsible for what happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so who put it in the in the kitchen? Who put who put it in the kitchen? Who's to blame? Who's um, to blame? Anyone except me. <laughs> <laughs> anyone but. <laughs> Awesome. Well, awesome. thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate you turning in um, and sharing that story. It means a lot. All right. Do we have anybody else? Any good other good yes. stories? Yes. Nathan said the funniest mistake, he tried cooking. <laughs> he what? He tried cooking. He that tried cooking. That's the funniest yes. mistake. Yes. Okay. We're going to change that, buddy. We're changing that today. <laughs> anybody else? Yeah. And I'll share mine. I let lit um, the kitchen on fire. So no one died. No one died. Safe, but yeah, I just awesome. was on fire. I don't know how. No, I love it. I love it. All right. So as you see, our vegetables are getting a little translucent. They're getting a little soft. We're in the right realm. It's smelling. Can I get some descriptions? Guys, in, in the chat, tell me what you're smelling. Like whether it's like sweet or bitter or fragrant or spicy. Tell me what you're, what you're smelling. I like it smells good. It smells really good. I mean, my glasses are fogged, but it smells really good. So 
Well, this is like kind of almost soft. We're gonna be adding in our garlic because this is why I love. This is my happy place right here, garlic. That's I would bathe in it, I would bathe in it, but no one would like me after that, so I can only eat it. All right, garlic in there. These spoons are in a tablespoon. Beautiful. All right. Toss it. Now this is where this is where Flavor Town starts kicking in. This is this is this is happiness right here. Get that garlic. We're gonna cook it gently. You want to keep it stirring. We don't want that garlic to burn on the bottom. We have beautiful vegetables. All right. So next thing we're gonna be adding in, of course, is going to be our andouille sausages. We're gonna get this a little bit rendered before we start adding liquid. You don't want to add liquid and then add in our sausage. We want to cook a little bit. So Ooh. give it a couple Ooh. minutes. We'll let this cook. It's so while this is trying. happening, I have another question for you guys. Tell me, when it comes to like when you were younger and now that you have grown up and so adult, how has your like cooking changed? Like has it been like more of a situation of like you eat healthier now or you're eating healthy the long time? So I want you guys to give me some answers in there while we're we're cooking our sausage off. Um, tell me, how has your cooking changed? Oh, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I've been eating pescatarian for about close to three months now, and um, I might break tonight. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I might break. Might. They gotta, they gotta all hold me back. Team, you gotta hold me back, guys. Hold me back, please. All right, Vicky, do we have any answers yet? Any changes? How how has how is your yeah. cooking changed over the years? Yeah. Um, Phyllis says healthy now. Use more fresh vegetables Ooh. and fresh herbs. Love it. Always love to bake now. Cooking protein. Mm. I'm much more comfortable experimenting with flavors and recipes. Justin says. Love it. Um, Emily says, I cook a lot more recipes from all around the world. I've gotten more comfortable with spices I've Love never it. heard of. No, this is, a, this is perfect. All right. So you start seeing the sausage is starting to weep, weep flavor into this. This is, this is good. This is what we need. We need this flavor to start weeping. All right. Next. And those of you who don't like okra, you can start putting your gumbo filet in. But we're throwing okra in ours. Bam. Here we go. Mix that in. Oh, oh, happy town over here. All right. So a little extra flavoring. We're gonna add in some of our Cajun seasoning. Say about another two tablespoons in there. We're gonna add in our Worcestershire sauce. Beautiful. We're gonna give it another quick mix. Now we're deepening our flavors. We're deepening it up. All right. Now it's our rice. So we're gonna be using long grain rice. Um, you can use short grain if you want to, or whatever rice that you have in your, in your pantry. But today we're gonna to be using long grain rice. So we're gonna be adding in our cup of long grain rice. Mix. Mix, mix from the bottom. Now, if you start seeing a little fawn on the bottom, give it a good, sh good scraping. Get that fawn off that bottom. That's all flavor on that bottom. All right. So next, sorry. Uh, we are going to be adding in our tomatoes. Beautiful. And then we're gonna be adding in back our chicken. All right. Now we have the rest of our seasoning. We're gonna add that right in because we like to season as we cook. All right. And then we're gonna fold it all in. Oh. 
Make sure you stir that bottom. We don't want none of that stuff burning. From the bottom up. From the bottom up. Now, if your pot starts to get hot, make sure you have your towels. So you don't want to burn your hands. Use them pot holders. Use them towels. All right. Now, it's time to do a little bit of liquid action. Broth. Half a broth. All right. So liquid's in. We're going to give this a quick stir. Make sure liquids hit the bottom. And we're going to turn the heat up too high. So we bring this up to a boil. So we're going to bring it up to a boil. And once it's at the boil, we're going to go back down to the simmer. So Vicki, do we have any more answers to our last question? Oh yeah. We have uh, COVID made me a better cook. I oh. used to cook big elaborate meals since having kids. I've gotten more simple. My seven-year-old is cooking with me tonight, cutting yes. with a knife for the first time. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a question too. Can we use brown rice? Yes. Yes, you can use brown rice. Brown rice is totally doable. Um, I would definitely say with brown rice, double the amount of liquid because uh, if you only have brown rice, brown rice takes a long time and the cooking time is gonna probably double. So just know if you're using brown rice, you, you do a double the amount of liquid and also understand it's gonna take a lot longer, unfortunately, but it's okay. Brown rice is a lot healthier. It's good fiber, cleans out the intestines, and it's good for you. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't knock the brown rice. All right. So you got one more before it starts bubbling. It's almost bubbling. So I got enough time for one more answer. I don't have another answer. No for more you. answers. All right. <laughs> but no, but Deborah did share that they're making a vegan version. Oh. Yeah. Okay, Deborah. We're gonna, we're gonna bring you back on here now. Deborah, can you can you can you unmute your mic? Deborah, you there? Yeah, hi. Hi, Deborah. So, Deborah, what are you using for it? How are you making yours vegan? Tell, tell us what you're doing. So, we used the tofurkey chicken and yes. sausage. Let me see if I have the wrapper. Oh, so how is it smelling? Is it still smelling good? Oh, it smells really good. And then we have um, vegetable broth instead. Yes. Awesome. And, um, yeah, and a uh, uh, vegan as, as well as a uh, tofurkey sausage. It's smelling good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And thank you for, you know, unmuting because I know it's a little intimidating to put you on the spot like that, but I like to hear new, new, new ideas when it comes to cooking. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So we are simmering. Now we're going to bring this down to about a medium low. So we're bringing it down to like a two, maybe a two and a half, maybe a three. Let's go with two to start with. And if you have to bump up the heat, we'll go with that. While that is happening, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. So we got a timer going. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. We're gonna bring this down to about 280. Uh, yeah, 280, perfect. All right, now, I know you guys know that it is almost the end of Black History Month, and you know, with Black History Month, I want to I want to I want to highlight a few people in our history that were chefs that actually made a really big impact. So uh, I hope that you guys can you know while this is simmering, go down a little journey lane, a little bit of story time with you know Uncle Jake, and uh, we're gonna go and uh, go 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 back into history. So. The first care, first person, first black chef we're going to talk about, his name is James Hemings. He was born in Virginia in 1765. At age eight, he became Thomas Jefferson's slave through his inheritance. When he was 19, Hemings set sail to Paris because Thomas Jefferson was actually brought to, um, to, uh, uh Paris during the wars. And uh, he actually set sail to Paris, which is where he began his cooking career and became the first American trained as a French chef. So let's go, James, man, first French chef. I mean, that's, that's a, I'm sorry, a black French chef back in the 1700s. Kudos, my friend. 
kudos. I love it. In 1787, Hemmings became the chef de cuisine at Hotel de la Logique. I know, I'm, I'm butchering. I'm sorry, guys. I, uh, this is French. Uh, Jefferson's personal residence and where he became, uh, and where he actually cooked for politicians and celebrities. So back in the 1700s, super awesome. He's one of our, you know, black chefs in history that are making a change and the first French black chef. I like it. Oh, sorry, first black French chef. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Hemmings was freed in 1796 after some travel. He returned to Monticello uh, and Jefferson's home in Virginia to run the kitchen. He cooked the history. He he cooked the historic meal between Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. Which, if you are a big Hamilton fan, uh, the song "The Room Where It Happens," he was in that room. Um, and also, Hemmings introduced European style macaroni and cheese, French fries, creme brulee, and ice cream to America. You're welcome. All right, our next chef, Zephyr Wright. The personal chef of President Lyndon B. Johnson. Miss Wright told President Johnson about her experience with discrimination, which is thought of having influenced his signing of the Civil Rights Act. Good job, Zafir. All right, uh, the next person we're going to talk about is Abby Fisher. Abby Fisher is one of the first black cookbook authors. Um, she was also known for her Southern cooking, particularly her pickles and preserves. In 1880, after winning a bronze medal at a fair at San Francisco, the juror said her pickles and her sauces have a panace. Pignancy? Can, can I get it? Can I get it? Can I get it? Pignancy? Okay, I said it right. All right. And flavor, seldom equal, and when once tasted, not soon forgotten. Mm, get it, Abby. Her cookbook was originally published in 1881 and reprinted in 1995. So if you got, you know, Amazon, you get that cookbook, especially if you love pickles. All right. Edna Lewis, a renowned author and chef, is one of the most influential figures in modern Southern cooking. In 1954, she started catering and teaching cooking classes at the American Museum of Natural History. Get it, girl. She went on to publish In Pursuit of Flavor in 1988 and The Gift of Southern Cooking, written, by, written with Scott Peacock in 2003. Get it, girl. All right. Last but not least, these are two chefs, two for one, Larry and Geraldine Bethlin. Their restaurant, Brenda's Barbecue Pit, their efforts contributed to the success of the bus boycotts. The restaurant became an unofficial center for local civil rights movements, holding the NAACP meetings, printing flyers, and planning protests. Brenda is the oldest barbecue restaurant in Montgomery, and this family-run restaurant still feeds locals its popular ribs, pig ears, and chopped pork. Good job, Larry and Geraldine. We have a little bit of time left. We got how much time we got left? Five more minutes. Thank you. So, uh, Vicky, Vicky, do we have any more answers to our last question? Let's see. How are you guys, you know, changing it up a little bit? With oh, your we do have some questions. Jackie yeah. asked, uh, what type of liquid did you use? Oh, great question. Uh, we use chicken stock. Now, super important. Whatever protein you put into there, try to go with the same kind of stock. It would be very weird tasting if you actually went and put some beef stock in this. It wouldn't be horrible, but it would taste a little funky. Um, so whatever meat or protein you put in there, if you can, try to find the stock that goes with it. So if you're using pork, use pork stock. You can also use chicken, but either one works. Uh, if you're using beef in this recipe, make sure you're using beef stock. Um, if you're using just fish, use a fish stock. Uh, so just don't really, don't be feeling like you have to really stick to a certain kind of like stock, but also try to make it kind of resemble the flavors that you're putting into it. Don't go too crazy. Oh, also, if you're a big stock maker, which I like stock, uh, don't use beet stock for this. I know it sounds crazy, but purple literally dyes everything. And unless you want your jambalaya to be purple, don't use beet stock. But yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? And Jacobson, I'm going to go off script just a little bit and Ooh. ask you a question. Yes. What and or who inspired you to first 
love cooking. Inspired you to oh, get in the kitchen yeah. and just go into the origin yes. story. I like it. No, this is perfect. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, my story starts in uh, 1988. Um, I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, my mother uh, and my grandmother raised me until I was about 11. And uh, my grandmother, uh, by the time I was like five years old, retired. And she taught me how to cook every day. She was, she was the breakfast person. She was a lunch person and she was a dinner person. And I was always there with my stool, uh, cooking, peeling, making rice, uh, doing anything I can. And uh, a lot of my cooking uh, actually comes from her, uh, at least my methods, um, especially keeping it easy and keeping it simple. Um, actually, what's really great was this, this, um, this last Christmas, I got to see my grandmother. I haven't seen her in about two years. Um, and with COVID, it was very, uh, very hard, um, because we, we, of course, were really scared and we're taking all the precautions and getting tested and stuff like that. Um, but to be able to spend Christmas with her and, uh, cook with my grandmother, uh, and actually I recorded an entire video of her making her Spanish rice. Uh, and she was a boss, like, believe it or not, I get a lot of, uh, my swagger in the kitchen from my grandmother. And uh, she, she, she's like, all right, we're gonna do a video. All right, let's do this. And she was ready, she was on point. She knew how to display things. She understood how to explain things. She had the amazing terminology um, and she made me look stupid. So I was like, okay, grandma, come on in. So believe it or not, I truly believe in my heart that she did influence us wanting to do online cooking classes again. Um, because she's like, you know, it's super easy to get in the kitchen. You just need someone to, you know, cook with you. So, uh, thank you, Grandma. I, uh, she has definitely been my first chef and uh, a really big influence in what I'm doing today. So, our 10 minutes is almost up. We're going to give it a little peek. Ooh, it's simmering. So, we're going to turn up the heat a little bit. So, if your rice isn't already kind of floating or plumping up yet. We're gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Oh yeah, our rice is, is getting there. This is perfect. This is where we want it. All right, make sure while you're doing this, you stir the bottom. You don't want things burning on the bottom. So give it a good stir in the bottom, especially if you have a thin pan. If you have a thin pan, those things like burn like no other. Trust me, I grew up with all the thin, thinnest pans in the possible world and it just seemed like I always burnt things. So stirring it every couple minutes is totally okay, um, especially while it's simmering. You wanna make sure nothing burns on the bottom. No burned food in here. All right. So we're gonna turn this up to about medium heat. We're going to, oh, yep. Yeah, we're gonna get a little bit more simmering going. We're gonna be adding in our shrimp. <coughs> Beautiful. And we're gonna add them because we want them to cook for about five minutes and we don't want them to overcook. So this is super important. If you're doing the shrimp, don't add the shrimp until we're at this point, the five minute mark. And you're probably asking, and I, I'm, I'm gonna guess, how do you know when we're at the five minute mark? You gotta try, if you're not experienced like I am, you have to try it. If you notice that your rice is still a little indente, it's not all the way cooked, um, that's about where it's at. If it's still rock hard, do not add your shrimp. You want it to be at the al dente mark. So many shrimp, geez. All right, so we're gonna take a quick five minute break, guys. I want you guys to go get the drinks, take uh, some time to like kind of recuperate, and we're gonna come back and uh, we're gonna check on our food. See you guys in about five minutes. Also, clean, clean as you cook, guys. No messes. See you guys in five minutes. Hey guys, all right, so five minutes been up and we're gonna check on our shrimp. Oh yes, this is beautiful, all right. So some of our shrimp is already mostly cooked. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start stirring them in. 
Oh, yeah. Now, the residual heat should cook these all the way through. So we're going to give it like another probably minute or two of heat. And then we're going to turn it off and let it finish cooking. So again, Vicky, how you doing over there? You I'm doing great. I'm feeling a little anxious because I'm, I'm hungry and all the good smells are coming in. And yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you need me to grab some paper towels for the drool that's happening? Is that <laughs> no, what's yeah, happening? I have a cup when you of water do? here, so you got water there. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Oh uh, yeah, no, the smells are looking good. Everything's looking great. Again, we're gonna let this cook for like another minute, and then we're gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna let it rest. Super important. You want to go from it being heated up to letting it all come and absorb in. So while this is happening, I want to remind you guys. If you guys want to check out more classes, we have uh, actually all the classes up to June already on our website at feedthemask.org slash classes. So make sure you go online, see what you like, um, and see when those classes. The great thing about these digital classes, which by the way, I'm super glad to, again, be teaching you guys again, but we can actually help so many more people in our community and teach so many other families about how to cook healthy and on a budget. So these, these, this, this meal itself is about six portions of, of food in a, in a normal family. If you're in my family, probably lasts you the night. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, uh, this is only about close to $35. And again, um, that is something that we're trying to really focus on is really being mindful of people's budgets. Not every family needs to be spending, you know, a hundred dollars per a entire meal. If you can get it down to six meals for under 30 bucks, that's perfect. And this is what we want to teach you guys. All right. So heat turned off. Everything's already looking good. Oh, the shrimp is looking nice and beautifully orange. All right. Now it's time for it to rest. Put the lid back on. Give it a quick rub. If it's too hot, make sure you give it a rub with your, you know, oven mitts and let it rest for about a couple minutes. All right, Vicky, what you got? You got any questions for me? Uh, any, let's see. How are people doing? How are you guys doing? Let yeah, me know. how are you doing? Tell me, how are you doing? Have you made it to this point? If not, let me know what's your, like, if you guys are struggling at all, tell me. It's, this, is, this is the time for you to learn. This is your class. I wanna know if you're struggling about anything, or you're not sure, or you're like, ah, let me know. At this point, you should be able to taste things. So if it's not tasting right, it's about time to figure out your seasonings. I wanna go back to a question from Peter. Okay. Would veggie stock substitute for any other since it complements other flavors? I'm sorry, any veggie stock that we can substitute? Yeah, would veggie stock substitute? Yes. Veggie stock, honestly, um, especially when we're talking about waste, um, you know, a plant gave its life for you to be able to have this meal. So why not try to use the most out of it? So why don't we go and take those vegetable ends and pieces, put in some water, get all that nutrients out of it and put it in something that we're going to be using in the, in the future. Don't be buying that box stuff. Just use what is usually going to be wasted and recycle it into another dish. So. Yes, veggie stock is always the best substitute. If not, I would say the substitute to go with almost any time you need to use a stock or a liquid in your dishes. And Anita is saying it smells smoky. Uh, Justin is saying it smells amazing. Mm. Um, Sylvia is saying it smells so delicious. I am okay. right there with you. I, it, it smells amazing. I'm, I'm super happy, you guys. Um, and again, I want to make sure you guys are connecting with us. I want. I can't. I can't be there with you. I can't guide you. So, if you have, if you have the ability, please take pictures. Uh, hashtag feed the mass. Hashtag Oregon Food Bank. And sharing your stories. I want to see how you guys are cooking. How everything is looking. I want to see your finished products. Again, I want to make sure you're doing your homework and your classwork. So, show me your homework. Show me your classwork, and I will give you a thumbs up. I promise. And make sure you go to Instagram at, at Feed the Mass, or if you're on Facebook, go to at Feed the Mass on Facebook, and you can find us on there. Um, yeah, thank you guys. And All right. Chef, do you have any advice for Cassandra who says, my rice is still very crunchy? Very Sad crunchy. Piece. Okay. Um, so, Cassandra, can we, can, we put, can we put Cassandra up? Yeah, I'm here. 
You there? Hey, Cassandra. Yeah. So how is how is the liquid looking in your pots? Is you have a lot of liquid, um, or is your liquid almost gone? Uh, I would say it's almost gone, actually. Like, I don't okay. know what it is. No problem. I, so what we're going to do, a very simple thing, let's grab another, like, I would say a cup, a half cup of water, and let's add it into your mix, and just give your rice a little bit of water. Some rice actually needs a little bit more water than anything. So if it's still crunchy, add a little more water and let it simmer for, I would say, another five minutes. Let's see how it goes. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Any other problems that I can, I, I mean, this is your time. You need to, you need to <laughs> ask, ask it. I need to know. Um, while you guys are, you know, asking your problems, um, we're going to do a taste test because the most important thing, if it doesn't taste right, you shouldn't serve it. So, oh, it smells right. It, it smells right. Yeah, and and someone's asking me, I still have quite a bit of liquid in mine. Should I leave it in or dump it out? Uh, how is your rice? Let's 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 us let's get her back on. Let's get her on the line. Imar, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. That's uh, Amar. But Amar, I, thank you. Yeah, but so, I checked the rice and it's uh, fully cooked. So should I just still leave it or should I dump it out? I would say I would say let's take out some of that liquid. Yeah. Um, make sure you give it a good stir, though. Have uh -huh. you given it a good stir? Yeah, I have. I've stirred it up quite a bit of time. Okay. So if your rice is already cooked, then yeah, take a ladle and you know, lay out some of that liquid. Save the yeah. liquid. Don't throw it out. We don't throw things out. Okay. Save that liquid. You can uh -huh. use it for another dish. You got it. All right. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, bro. All right. So we're going to give it a quick taste test. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, it's good. All right, we're good. Um, again, if you need more salt, if you need a little more spice, mm -hmm. if you need a little whatever, mm. add it in there. This is the time to do it. All right. Mm. Well, yeah. Now it's time to dress this baby up. So remember our parsley, we give it a quick chop. We're going to take half of it and we're going to mix it in as an internal garnish. What this is going to do is lift up your dish, get a little freshness to it. We don't want it to be so um, heavy. Put a little lightness into it. All right. Now, in your well. recipe, you're also going to say some green onion. You can add that in there if you want to. Um, but whatever er fresh herbs you have, you can add this in there if you want to. So half of your parsley, and a little bit more. And now we're going to fold it in. Fold it in. Beautiful. Oh, this looks good. So you can see automatically that little parsley just lifted it up. Just lifted it up gently. All right, now it's time to play. So, my favorite thing is shallow bowls. If you've been to my house, you'll notice I'm a big bowl fan. I really rarely eat in plates. I have like 30 bowls and four plates. So, um, I have them all shapes and sizes. I like these shallow bowls because it kind of makes me feel fancy and you get to see the height. We're gonna go for a little bit of height to make some three dimensionality into this. So, let's start plating. Mm, let's start painting. Take it. Cool. Ladle at a okay. time. Right in the middle. Oh. Oh. Get in there. Get in there, Summer. Get in there. Oh, yeah. That's looking good. Make sure you get a little bit of everything. I ain't got no chicken. Where's the chicken? Get some chicken in there. Oh. Did Tabasco sauce make it in there? You uh, oh. I totally. I forget that. I did not put Tabasco in this. So it's cool. It's all right. If you forget an ingredient, you can always add in. Tabasco is one of those things like, most likely I'll add more Tabasco into this. So it's not the end of the world if you don't have Tabasco. Thank you for that person who in there. If you forgot your Tabasco, add it in before and then mix it and then you're good to go. But thank you whoever did that. Tabasco, don't forget your Tabasco. See, another, another, another little mistake. It's all right. Now we're gonna make it look pretty. A little external garnish. Beautiful, nice, happy. The picture. All right, the moment. Vicky, take. Mm. Take it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, just just go to go to your table. Go to your table. You're good. She's gonna go. Go back to your table. <laughs> Social distance. All right. Keep your distance. Keep your distance. All right. Ready. Truth. This is hot. I'm gonna blow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on a timer. Okay. You're good. 
I like these. I like this reaction. Mm. Is that right? This is good. It's good. It's a perfect amount of spice. Oh. I don't really like hot things, and it's mm -hmm. just like flavorful, and mm -hmm. it doesn't make me choke because it's too hot or anything. Like it's just yeah. perfect. Oh. And the right amount of meat. Mm -hmm. I like it. Okay. Really See. Good. All right, guys. So again. I want you guys to take some pictures of your food, make it look pretty. If it doesn't look pretty, that's the first thing you do when you eat is like you see it. So make it look pretty, put some effort into it guys. Uh, the most creative, and I'll even do this right now. The most creative dish that I see on Instagram, hashtag feed the mass and at feed the mass, the most creative will get a free class next month. I want to do that for whoever, whoever gives me the most creative one. So, if you want that free class next month, you're gonna be making pizza. You, I want to see your, I want to see your amazing food. So I'm gonna be doing it. We're gonna do it all the way for the next 24 hours. So make sure you post the next 24 hours. The best dish gets free class. So again, the best way, because right now we're 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 at the point we're eating. But what happens when we're done eating? Of course, I'm a single gentleman, ladies. Um, and the one thing I want to say is leftovers are the best way and sometimes the best thing in the world. So what we're going to do, how do you cool this? Cause this is super important. How do you cool this? How do you make sure it's safe to eat again? A lot of people just leave it on the stove. If you're my mom, I'm calling you out, mom. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. She is the three day rule. If it's not eaten in three days and it's still on the stove, it's going. And I've seen it happen. I'm, I'm going to call you out because this, this is what you do. You leave food on the stove, mom. I like, I, I've, I, I, we've talked about this. Sorry. This is, this is a therapy session for me. And I'm going to do it in front of the, the entire world right now. I don't care. So, uh, let's show you guys how to properly cool us down. So what we're going to need. Is some sheet pants. So. You want something that is going to create the most amount of surface area so it's a cool down the quickest. So we're going to take our jambalaya, nice and hot. Oh, looks good. Smells good. Oh, it's happening. And you want to just fill a nice, even, thin layer of your jambalaya. And then from here, we're going to let it chill on the countertop for about 30 minutes. So while everybody's done plating, you can go put this on, on a sheet tray, let it chill on your countertop. And then right before you're about to go to bed or go and like finish doing your dishes, throw it into your fridge. Then next morning, you're after an entire night of it chilling, put it into a container and portion it out and you have reheatable, amazing food. So yeah, this is how you actually make sure you store it and you make it last longer than a couple of days on the stove top, mom. Sorry, that was, that, was, that, was, that was rude. All right, so this brings us to the part that I, I regret. I don't want to, but we have to depart from each other. Um, and with that, I want to thank you, Vicky, for managing our questions and comments. I hope the food is the food. Is it gone yet? <laughs> Almost. Almost. I don't think I've taken a breath. Oh, okay. Just been inhaling. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a special thanks again for Oregon Food Bank for sponsoring this episode of Culture Cooking. Uh, if you want to be part of our educational experience and help people learn how to cook and eat healthy, you can support us online by going to our website at feedthemass.org classes. Now, super important. There are two ticket options. There's one for your family. And the second option is the buy one, give one option. Now, what that does is it means that people who can't unfortunately afford our education, that happens, but you're able to actually help a family who are in need to this of this education to actually get access to this education. So if you have the uh, the ability to please but do a BOGO and help another person um, get it, or another family have access to our, our classes, I really appreciate that. And you can also go to feedthemass.org slash donate and donate. You can sponsor classes and you can learn all about the things that we are doing, including our Fed program, 
My Fed team actually is probably still cooking right now. And we've been feeding 6,000 people plus a week for the last six months. This is huge. We don't ask for money. It is, it is delivered to people and people can pick them up. This is super important. So if you want to learn more about our Fed program, or maybe you know someone or yourself are in need of free meals for the community, make sure you go to feedthemass.org slash Fed. And again, go to OregonFoodBank.org. Help support their organization because they're helping support our organization. It's just one family of support system. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Again, I want to see your homework. Get those pictures in. Someone is going to be getting a free cooking class. It might as well be you. And again, this is Jacobson Valentine with Feed the Mass saying, if you like cooking, might as well do it. It's pretty easy.